Hello, I'm Dr. William Pollock. This video is about cell injury and the use of pulsed electromagnetic fields to repair the cell. We all have cell injury on a daily basis in many tissues of our bodies and we can all do something about it. There are many common misconceptions about cell injury. It's not just about physical injury. It has to be a very basic consideration in helping anyone in any unhealthy state. Cell injury results when cells are stressed so that they are no longer able to adapt or when cells are exposed to damaging agents or de are deprived of essential nutrients or become compromised by mutations or intrinsic abnormalities that affect essential uh, cellular constituents. The normal cell has a fairly narrow range of function and structure. It handles physiologic demands, maintaining a steady state called homeostasis. When this homeostasis is challenged, the cell has to adapt or it will die. Adaptations are reversible functional uh, and structural responses to more severe physiologic stresses and some pathologic stimuli. With adaptation, new but still altered states happen to a point, allowing the cell to survive and continue to function. I call this balanced imbalance. For instance, in response to increased loads, heart muscle becomes enlarged, a form of adaptation and can even undergo injury. If the blood supply to the heart muscle is compromised or inadequate, the muscle first suffers reversible injury, seen by certain cell changes. If this is not reversed, the cells suffer irreversible injury and die. Virtually all forms of disease start with molecular or structural alt alterations in individual cells. Injury to cells and to the matrix between cells ultimately leads to tissue and organ injury. The end results of genetic, biochemical, or structural changes in cells and tissues become functional abnormalities, which lead to clinical signs and symptoms and then may become disease. Cell injury progresses through a reversible stage. It is obviously best to stop the change there. There are two forms of cell injury, reversible and irreversible. The hallmarks of reversible injury are reduced oxidative phosphorylation with, with resulting depletion of ATP, the basic energy of the cell. Cellular swelling caused by changes in ion concentrations and water influx. Mitochondrial and skel, uh, cell skeleton alterations and DNA damage. Within limits, the cell can repair these derangements. And if the injuring stimulus goes away, the cell will return to normal and live out its lifespan. If the damage is not stopped there, the injury becomes irreversible. The cell cannot recover and it dies, either through necrosis or apoptosis. In necrosis, the cell auto-digests. An example of a cause of necrosis is infection. When the cell's DNA or proteins are damaged beyond repair, the cell commits suicide appropriately. This is called apoptosis. Both apoptosis and necrosis may be seen in response to the same insult. The main causes of cell injury are oxygen deprivation, physical agents, chemical agents and drugs, infection, immunologic reactions, genetic derangements, and nutritional imbalances. Physical agent, agents causing cell injury include mechanical trauma, extremes of temperature, including burns and deep cold, sudden changes in atmospheric pressure, radiation, and electric shock. When most of us hear the term injury, we normally assume it is mechanical trauma, such as sprains, dislocations, muscle tears, fractures, and so on. Non-physical causes of cell injury are much more common and usually subtle. We don't know if they are happening in our bodies until we have signs or symptoms. Cell injury progresses through various stages, including any of the stages repaired naturally within the repair capacity of the body. So at, during any of the stages, they can repair naturally within the repair capacity of the body. Now repair can be facilitated either naturally or by the application of various treatments. 
Cell injury progresses through various stages. The first is biochemical, followed by structural changes below the level of recognition with a light microscope. Then it progresses to changes seen with a microscope. And then ultimately it, change, it progresses to uh, where changes are seen without a microscope. That is, they're ph uh, physically or, or visually obvious. At any of these levels, physiologic reactions may be able to be detected, either by equipment, lab tests, or through signs and symptoms. There's a time lag between the cell stress and the physical changes of the cell injury or death. With lab techniques, changes may be seen in minutes to hours after injury. However, it may take hours to days before changes can be seen by a microscope or be seen visually. For example, if blood supply is shut off to heart muscle, cell swelling is a reversible physical change that may occur in a matter of minutes and may progress to irreversibility within an hour or two. Unmistakable microscope changes of cell death may not be seen until 4 to 12 hours after total vascular blockage. Persistent or excessive injury causes cells to pass a nebulous point of no return into irreversible injury and cell death. So let me say it again. Cellular swelling is the first manifestation of almost all forms of injury to cells. This is called edema. This is a stage where PEMFs are particularly helpful. The consequences of cell injury depend on the type, state, and adaptability of the injured cell. The cell's nutritional and hormonal status and its metabolic needs are important in its response to injury. If these are deficient, then cells may have difficulty adapting to and recovering from the injury. So if these factors are out of balance, they usually have to be addressed first to maximize recovery from cell injury. Any injuring stimulus simultaneously triggers multiple interconnected mechanisms that damage the cells. There's no single mechanism involved. As a result, treatment approaches should have multiple mechanisms of action on the cell. Targeting one mechanism of injury, for example, edema, to the exclusion of increasing ATP production, will be more likely to produce less than desired results. Opportunities to intervene are possible even to the point of imminent or actual cell death. Dying cells are typically surrounded by cells that still have the chance to be revived. If cell death from cell injury can be limited, the damage to the tissues and the organs can be limited too. However, even cell death is part of the natural cycle of cells. Even without injury, all cells go through their own natural cycles of life and death without the need for them to be injured. Poor natural cell death or apoptosis, either too little or too much apoptosis, can also contribute to a wide range of diseases. Defective apoptosis may lead to increased unnatural cell survival. An inappropriately low rate of expected apoptosis permits the survival of abnormal cells and often leads to cancer. It can also fail to eliminate potentially harmful cells such as chronic lymphocytes resulting in chronic inflammation. Or these defective cells can actually start attacking the tissue itself causing autoimmune disorders. Increased apoptosis results in excessive premature cell death causing neurodegenerative changes or diseases such as ischemic injury for example, heart attack or stroke, and can also uh, cause cells to die off uh, prematurely um, that are infected with viruses but should have the capacity to survive and retain the virus and, and cloak and, or uh, maintain uh, the virus under control. What I talked about before now was cell injury as an abnormal event. However, a common natural type of cell injury event, usually considered part of life, is aging. Cellular aging begins at some variable point in time after growth stops, typically in a person's 20s, and leads to the progressive loss of functional capacity over decades, characteristic of aging the person and ends in death. With age, there are physiologic and structural alterations in almost all organ systems. Aging-induced alterations in cells cause the aging of an organism and then the person. Cellular aging is the progressive accumulation over the years of chronic sublethal 
cell injury that may or may not lead to cell death, or it certainly can lead to a diminished capacity of the cell to respond to injury. Since cell injury affects all of us on a daily basis, the question is, what can we do to improve cell function and reduce the effects of cell injury? This is where pulsed electromagnetic fields come in. They are the sine qua non of cell injury management. Low frequency pulsed electromagnetic fields, or PEMFs, at the right intensity, penetrate completely through the entire body, stimulating every cell in their path. They can be applied locally to treat the, or to treat the whole body. In my book, Magnetic Therapy in Eastern Europe, not only do we discuss the use of PEMFs for various medical applications, but we also discuss many of the known mechanisms of how PEMFs work in the body and on cells to improve and reverse cell injury. The classic effects of PEMFs touch almost all aspects of cell injury. They work to reduce edema, improve nutrient flow to cells, open cell membrane channels to allow nutrients in and waste out better, increase production of ATP, stimulate repair mechanisms, and enhance apoptosis of chronic inflammatory cells. Research indicates that not only cells that are out of balance, I'm sorry, research indicates that only cells that are out of balance are affected by most clinical PMF energy. That's important clinically, since as clinicians we must first of all do no harm. There's no other technology that I'm aware of with a single modality can have both the range and depth of actions that clinically directed PEMFs can have. In addition, it does all this with no harm to healthy cells. In my experience, PEMFs affect the entire range of cell injury, including that caused by physical trauma. Low intensity PEMFs have long been approved by the FDA for healing non-union fractures. This is a prototype use of PEMFs. Now we just have to think beyond physical injury to general concepts of cell injury to realize the extended spectrum of benefits of PEMFs in clinical practice and for personal use. They should be part of every clinician's tool chest. This is the modern magnetic medicine. This is the new edge of medicine. I also consider frequent, if not daily, PEMF use a basic anti-aging strategy. I ask my patients regularly if they would rather have average health or good health. From what I've seen, those who routinely use PEMFs appear to be healthier than their age-related peers having less dis-ease in their bodies. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to talk to you soon. This is Dr. William Pollock.